So they lied to you, gave you a crippled version of Bitcoin and BTC. And to me, Bitcoin is the protocol in its original form from Satoshi, not the stupid ticker symbol that comes from the exchanges owned by the lizards. Okay. It comes from the actual use case of these technologies. So fucking use them. Jalantes. Today I have the pleasure of having Susan Sweden with us. Susan Sweden is the founder of the Freedom Travel Alliance. And in a very interesting turn of events, she found herself being a crypto entrepreneur, a pioneer within crypto. Susan, how are you? Thank you for being with us. I'm so good. I'm better now that we're on this together. So thanks for having me. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, well, you're very welcome. It's so cool to have you here. Guys, if you do not know what the Freedom Travel Alliance is, get ready. So since the pandemic started, certain megalomaniacs throughout the planet have been making it harder to move. And if you guys care about freedom, uh, this is the conversation that you guys need to tune into. We, I actually want to have Susan come on and talk to us on a periodic basis because this is such an important issue, the freedom of movement. Susan, what is the tra Freedom Travel Alliance? What do you guys yes. do? So we are a membership-based organization that flies um, just our members and moves them in a natural freedom way. Uh, so you will not hear about any of our trips you will not learn about any of our trips and you can't be on any of our trips unless you're a member so think of those member only jackets but way cooler and uh we we started uh 2021 and as we enter into you know, our, our second year of business we have members in over 82 countries and you are maybe like my fourth podcast that I've talked to. We've done all of this through word of mouth using what we know is a uh, grassroots guerrilla marketing um, style of talking about ourselves because we wanted to make sure we got it right. We wanted to make sure that people knew about us that needed to know about us and that we're providing a service for those that are desperate to get out of their different countries. Okay, so first off, Thank you so much for doing what you're doing. And second, um, could you please share with us your story on how you came to being a, a crypto entrepreneur with the Freedom Travel Alliance? What happened? Yeah, it wasn't on purpose. I'll be honest. Um, we kind of fell into it. My business partners uh, and my designer all said we need to start looking at crypto. We need to start uh, dealing with crypto. We need to do something inside of the crypto world. Okay. So what did that mean? That meant for us to be able to take crypto, uh, to be able to take, take crypto for membership, to be able to take it for you know any type of support, those that want to gift us in crypto, and then to really use it to buy these uh, charter flights. And that is the next level. So we opened up, like I said, in 2021, and we started with what a lot of businesses start with, using PayPal. It was an easy out of the box answer to accepting funding and money. And we found ourselves in the October uh, being completely wiped off of that platform. 15 days after we started Freedom Travel Alliance, we were frozen on PayPal. So it gave us a very clear indication that we wouldn't last there for very much longer. So when we started to look at other payment options, crypto became part of the forefront of like, we knew that freedom meant everything and we wouldn't be shut off. We wouldn't be shut out. We wouldn't be kicked out of that platform or off of those platforms. So we started heavily investing in that and looking at who inside of our own ecosystem could help us and support us, getting us up and running, taking it. Had a programmer come in and worked on it uh, day and night. And then in October, when we were officially booted off of PayPal, uh, we popped up and told everybody not to worry. We're back. We're better than ever. And we're taking crypto to do it. Uh, we started using crypto to pay for flights uh, in a unique way. Like I mentioned to you earlier, I didn't realize we're one in maybe, you know, a hundred that are using crypto in this manner. 
Um, a lot of people, when I asked uh, our audiences, do you take crypto? Everyone's willing to take it. The question is, are you using it? Are you using it to buy? Are you using it to source funding? Are you using it to buy your house, buy your plane, buy your cars, buy travel, buy a hotel? A lot of people charge up a, a credit card, um, but in the charter world, we can't take a credit card for payment. You actually have to pay using um, slave currencies, you know, using fiat. So what we didn't want to eliminate ourselves and our audience and our members from taking crypto, because if they had it and that's what they wanted to use to buy their charter, we wanted to take it, we wanted to support it, and we found it an immediate win-win solution for everybody. They had it, they wanted to use it, and we're taking it. We're one of few companies in the travel industry specifically to so charters that use it and then pay it out in crypto. Um, it's right been on. very freeing. So I do know of some uh, that, I, that I've used in the past, like cheapair.com, mm -hmm. Travala. Travala takes mm -hmm. Monero for anyone yep. that's interested. So, I you mean, there too. are some. You do too? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, so it's a, it, it, but what you're doing is something next level because you're taking, you're giving dignity back to, you know, to the experience of travel. And Enjoy. I, yeah. And, and so can you speak more to that? Because I know you've, you've run up against a lot of challenges to this day. You're still overcoming challenges. What have you faced since the, the, since the pandemic started? Yeah. So when we went to market and a uh, whisper campaign, we had my business partner, Dolores Cahill go out as the forward face on this because uh, she was well-known and I didn't want to be out in the front. So she went on a, a podcast like this and started talking about it going, Hey, we have this idea. Does anyone think that travel is broken and it needs to be revamped and revised? And it was an idea. It was day 15, January 15th. And on January 17th, our PayPal, like I mentioned, was frozen. Uh, the next day, our Proton Mail was shut down. And a hit piece came out about us that weekend um, through our daily rag mag called The Daily Beast. And uh, since then, we've consistently come up against some challenges because we are operating a non-traditional business during non-traditional times, trying to use traditional engines to do it. So banking, insurance, uh, CRMs, websites, payment processors, all of those want you to play and color inside the line. And we are sitting way outside of those, those lines. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up, huh? How they actually created a grid where they punish you on all levels. You were telling me that they even went after your CRM, correct? Correct. So we got shut wow. down from PayPal and we said, hey, we were ready for it. We were very proud of ourselves. We had our design page ready. So we launched. We launched within an hour of being taken off of PayPal. We launched and we launched a campaign putting this blast out to our, our subscriber list saying, hey, we got knocked down, but we're up again and we're coming back better than ever. We're taking crypto. And if you want to boost us with crypto, if you want a membership with crypto, if you want to pay for your charter with crypto, we're here, we're taking it and they can, you know, sit and spin. And four hours later, our CRM shut us down. And they said, uh, we had to go through all these different hoops to scrub our list, to clean it. We did it. I showed receipts of it. I it took us two and a half months to get it restored uh, where we could talk to our list again. But that email that was sent out saying we got knocked down off of PayPal, but we're back. Well, we had um, over a 55% open rate. That's a big open rate for people that don't know like what the metrics are of monitoring how well your emails are doing. It's unheard of to have a 55% open rate. So we were shaking trees. We are loud. We are target. Um, but I'm proud of that. I think that the pioneering that comes with anyone that's starting to do something different or building out parallel societies in the midst of the chaos um, should be, uh, we're, we should be all working together. So those people that are doing crypto, those people that are using platforms that are different, those people that are creating CRMs, those people that are on like Odysseys and all these different channels that we're now using because the, the fake books and all of those won't let you on. Um, this is where we're going to build together and build, build stronger. Yeah, for sure. 100%. So 
where are we now with travel? Because it seemed like the world opened up, right? That's the news everyone's talking about. The world opened up and 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 COVID ended. All of a sudden, it's it's over. We're back to normal. Poof. Poof. The well, so tonight, I, as I was mentioning, the Senate had a special session here in the United States that um, the Republicans voted against a mandate, a mask mandate, because um, for no apparent reason around the country, we saw the mask mandates fall down inside of schools, inside of offices, inside of buildings, but yet on the airlines, it wasn't. It was extended by another month. For what reason, we don't know. So the Senate was like, we're done. We're going to go after it because this is the one time they had a special session where they didn't need a 60% or 60 count vote. So they went for it and they pushed back. They won. Great. Now the question is, Um, what is looking, what does it look like to be in the UK? Everyone thinks the UK is wide open. Uh, unless you're, you know, you conformed and if you complied, you're good to go. If you did not take an experimental biologic, there are still rules that you must adhere to. So there's still segregation based on a health status inside of travel. The headlines are letting you believe uh, uh, otherwise. And it's intentional. I think. I think the intention is to say the world's open before Easter in the midst of a new war uh, and you can go, but, oh, wait, you can't afford it because the gas is ridiculous. And Yahoo, as I mentioned, just came out with their article saying, do we really want travel to reinstate itself? Because, you know, the carbon of all these people going to that's going to start traveling is going to cause a greenhouse effect that will kill the earth. Look how good the earth did during the lockdown yeah look how much we healed the earth so it's another psyops of like i would call the shell game you think that you're free uh, but those for those were the people that were paying attention to that i never asked someone to not wear a mask i just didn't wear one i never felt that there was a mandate on my life because there was one time that I allowed the system to get the better of me. And so for a mom that will forever live with some mom guilt, uh, no better, do better. So this, as I mentioned to you, this organization started from that love of, and protection of my son and uh, the desire for him to see the world uh, not discriminated, not segregated against, and not being told that he has to do something that goes against his own integrity, his own moral value, his own compass, and out of coercion. No one should be forced. Nothing should pierce the skin out of coercion. Yeah, I really think that moms and grandmas, moms in general, are, are, are going to save, are going to turn this around. So thank you for what you're doing, because it really takes a mom to tell her son and her husband, like, hey, enough is enough. And, and I really think that for all the women listening, I think that that's something that they, they should take into account that um, it's almost like I think guys need to get that signal from a woman like, hey, what's up? And and a lot of guys, um, you know, um, it, it, I think it's almost like bred into us, like through generation. It, when the women have enough is when the guys really take a stand. And so um, thank you for doing what you're doing. Um, I hope more people do what you're doing. Uh, it's just, it's wild to me that we find ourselves in these situations. And so right now you're taking Bitcoin. What else are you taking? Right. So we take, we take Monero, we take Litecoin. Uh, We're sitting inside of those privacy coins for a reason, right? We want to make sure that we're supporting exactly what we're, we're walking the talk. And so that that piece of being able to take it and use it and do something with it is important to us. We have two systems where we have some where we're mining. Obviously, we want to make sure that we're getting a return on our investment. But then there's the part of us that's using that. So a couple of our consultants get paid using crypto. That was their request. So we use it as much as we can and where we can and then invest it uh, in a smart manner to help some, bring some wealth back into the company. Uh, as we create what we're calling these freedom flights, these rescue missions. So tell us about these rescue missions, because I recently interviewed two of your refugees from Canada. The day they landed or a couple days after they landed in Mexico, 
and they were ecstatic. They were so happy to be free in freedom. Um, it's just wild for me to think of Mexico as the land of the free and the home of the brave, but it really is nowadays. Right, for Mexico Canadians, is, escaping Canadi you know, Canadians. Canadians are escaping. Like, what's going on? Like, this is like the twilight zone. So what's, uh, what's your experience with that? Because I, I, I'm pretty sure you get to see that. Constantly. Yeah, we have, we have been lucky enough that um, for those that, you know, you hear my Jersey accent. So you think that this is a, a domestic uh, company, but I'll tell you, it wasn't until two weeks ago, uh, did we even do a domestic flight. Everything that we've done from last year until this year has been what I'm calling these rescue freedom flights. Uh, they've been one way, typically one way, get me out of here. Uh, from Ireland to Mexico, to Panama, to Costa Rica. China is where, or China does, I, as I jokingly call it. Canada is where we've seen the biggest uptick over the last couple of weeks for obvious reasons, if you guys are watching what's going on there. Uh, the, and the same thing in Australia. In order to get out of those countries, you're going to have to comply to taking uh, and having multiple doses of a experimental biologic. And so a lot of people don't want to uh, do that in order to get out. And they just are done two years too long. And they are selling off everything they own to get out of these countries and look to us to help them do it lawfully and uh, safely. And that's important to me. I treat them the way I would want to be treated. Uh, I have a son, as I mentioned, I'm a mom. So the cost is also something we look at, which is why we take crypto. Because if you have the funds in crypto to pay for these charter flights and that's what you want to use, we want to take it. My next is like, sure, if you want to pay in silver, we'll take that too. But in the midst of this timing, we are watching everyone flee and try and find safe harbor. And like you mentioned, two of our amazing, Kathy and Paul that came on that six passenger, they all paid in crypto. Their goal was to use their cryptocurrency to get them to freedom. And they were, what coin do you take? We don't care. Uh, you know, they were willing to flip it and do what they needed to do in order to. But what we are supporting and what we want to make sure we are constantly listening to the people that are using it is where should we be sitting? Which is why I said to you when we met, it's important that we get the feedback from the people that are in this space that want to use it and that want to use it for their personal travel. So if we can create some of these fun flights um, that get people into you know, freedom events such as Anarchapoco uh, to the different concerts that are people where people aren't having to show a slave passport. We want to be the solution provider to get people to point A to point B as a natural freedom traveler, not just to freedom from these countries that, you know, are feeling inundated and pinned down and desperate, desperate. So right now um it, it seems as if uh, there's a calm with with because we're moving into you know a, a different narrative with i guess now where there's war and and everyone forgot about the pandemic um do you see the situation getting better for people to travel freely so this or do you is think what this I is going to be a fight for the for a long haul i wasn't ready for this one so i'll say that um, I knew from my medical freedom history that there was going to be a time uh, for those that aren't familiar with her. And I have to bring her up because she's a, a dear friend of mine. And I look to her as a mentor, Barbara Lowe Fisher uh, of NVIC.org um, said in 2019 inside the Capitol uh, at the Capitol event that I threw that there would become a time where you're going to have to show papers in order to get on a bus, to get in a cab, to get on a plane. And it was coming for the adults versus just the children. And here we are steps away from um, all these companies looking at taking that on and putting these things on schedules for six month olds. So I wasn't ready for what was happening inside of travel, even though we all had a hint. So for me to sit here and say, do I think that they're going to come back stronger? I think that this was the test. It was a global stress test and we failed globally. Mr. Global, whatever you want to call it, the oligarchs, whatever they are, decided to stop an inalienable right. They were, took it upon themselves 
to restrict our right to move, not just travel, move. You couldn't leave your house. You couldn't go to the grocery store. You weren't allowed to go to school. You weren't allowed to go to work. You weren't allowed to go to the doctor. No one wanted to go to the hospitals. So they use this as a stress. Our grandpas are rolling in their graves right now. Wake up, punks. So seriously, like two weeks, this is happening on our watch. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off. But seriously. Do you have any love of self watching this? You know, if, if you're just a keyboard jockey. I don't know. Maybe 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 what we need is just more balls, in my opinion. Uh, I am with you. Oh my gosh. You took it. The words out of my mouth. I've looked for the balls in my operators. I've looked for the balls in my charter brokers. I've looked for my balls in the hoteliers. I got kicked off of Uber months into the the pandemic because of my non commitment to wearing a face diaper. I won't do it. I've never done it. Um, So I, I looked at this going, where is this headed? So now Hindsight, they say, is 2020, right? So did we learn anything from 2021? I did. I'm so proud of the fact that I'm in year two of a travel business, a travel tech company that's going to solve for that issue when it comes up again. Do I believe it'll come up again? Hell yeah. Why wouldn't they do it again? And the next phase of it is under climate control conditions. Be mindful. They had a fire sale on big Airbuses and putting them out of business. During the pandemic, the first time, the first year, there were bills being passed inside of the United States saying, go green, which means electric cars that they could shut off, that buses, 20% of the buses that had to be electric, that goes all the way into what's flying in the sky. So what they're going to allow to travel based on a green narrative is next. And they're going to wrap it in a beautiful health package saying, well, it's healthier for the world. It's healthier for the economy. It's healthier for a population to not travel so much, to not, to not get together, to not move. I believe it's coming. So I'm actually proud that I'm, I'm a year ahead of the, the next phase of the, the further restriction to our inalienable right, a right to move. Yeah. It's, it's wild how many idiots are out there. Um, you know, w- when you're in areas now where there are no more face diapers, um, I, I, I kind of miss the face diapers because it brings to perspective how stupid people are and how stupid the masses are. And it's just a, a beautiful red pill to take on a daily basis when you see how easily people give in to tyranny without really thinking things through for themselves and so i'm at the point where i actually miss the face diaper because now i can't like judge people and judge their iq (laughs) yeah you know so it's almost like now they're now they're hiding now i don't know who who's who um but yeah i I I guess it depends on the state you're in i will tell you i was at the bank uh last week and i heard i'm sitting there doing some wires and i heard one of the women come in going do you guys not have to wear masks anymore to the teller and she's like they're optional now and she goes oh really i can't i I can't imagine this is like I, i i haven't taken mine off this is my security blanket i'm quoting her and I looked at the guy that works with like the bank teller. And I'm like, this is why I need to leave this damn state because <laughs> I'm like, Oh my God, you're being told you don't have to wear it now. And you literally just called it your security blanket. And if it works so well, dot, 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 I'll leave it there. I'm pretty sure your audience is aware of that narrative, but I agree that it's helpful to be able to judge them on that. Um, I just think that in some of these states, they're less likely to take them off because the psyops was real. They did a bloody good job on tricking and fooling and scaring the population. Well, I mean, this started a long time ago with, you know, uh, the, the doctrine of relativism where there's no such thing as right or wrong. There's no such thing as truth. There's no such, you know, this was the doctrine that they imposed throughout the world in academia. So what do you have now? You have authoritarianism. That is what is right, what the authorities tell you, and you just shut up and follow orders. So 
that's the world we're in. And it's, um, and it's going to be a long haul to turn things around. But I think that for us and for y'all watching, I think the option, best option that we have is to go galt. And thank you for doing what you're doing. And I hope more, I hope you get competitors, honestly, Susan, I, I hope listen, people compete with you. I agree. I think the only way we're going to get to where we want to be is having more people wake up and realize you're not born with a cape and um, some kind of sword or superpower that I was a mom on a mission. Uh, I'm also a middle child, so I don't like to be told no. So anyone that tells me no, I'm like, well, I'm going to push back on that really hard. Um, and I think that there is a beautiful outcome to this, like you said, this pandemic. I love what's happened uh, because of my son, because of what I want for him. Um, I grew up in a really simple suburban neighborhood where we played manhunt until the streetlights came on and my parents literally would ring a bell and that's how we knew it was time to go home. I want something that simple and that beautiful for my son where I'm not worried about um, capture. I'm not worried about, you know, I, I, I'm not worried about the indoctrination. I am ex excited about the humanitarian efforts that I'm seeing and the human spirit inside of what I call the Civ effect. So you know what a sieve is, like a colander. So what's happened here is everybody, like you said, that's not with us, they've, they've, shook, they've been shook out of my colander, my sieve. And everyone that's left inside are the people that I'm supposed to be building, living, and creating with anyway. So I welcome this burn down of the old, and I'm excited to meet my partners building the new. That's awesome. Thank you for saying that because it, it, it does. Um, you're right. This is the opportunity to grow and expand and there will be great opportunities for people to make their lives better. Um, the old is done with, if, if you're still out there still thinking about my 401k <laughs> social security, <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, people right now um, are thinking, you know, something very interesting is happening that I notice everyone now talks about crypto. And it's not that we're in a bull market. It's just that, that people that we are at that level where people at least know about it. At least they're competent in understanding where it stands in the market. And now um, we're at the point where people don't even trust mainstream media which is great. And, and really what we need now is education. Um, education and, and, and entrepreneurship. Because a lot of people think that crypto is just a way for them just to, to make money now. And they're thinking in terms of fiat. And they're not really thinking in terms of what it can really offer you. And, and it, what offers you is uh, first and foremost, freedom and the ability to do things that will take you to the next level. The mass, vast majority of use cases that crypto is capable of offering you listening to this are, 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 are abilities that you've never even thought of being possible in the old slave world and, and this is a perfect example of what we're talking about, that Susan has been able to figure out through crypto how to continue a business that is helping people out of oppression. So, yeah, Susan, this is freaking awesome. I'm, I'm really happy you're doing this. And I wish... We were live right now streaming because I know people want to ask you questions. So what I want to do, I want to have these conversations with Susan on a regular basis here on this channel, maybe every other month, because travel is important, guys. If you're not, if you don't have freedom of movement, then what are you? Might as well just bury yourself in a pot and, and live never. like a plant. You know? Never in the history of medicine and in the world, in all of the Spanish flu, polio, never have they ever locked down healthy people. 
So I will tell you when you asked me, is this the, the tea leaves? What do we see? What are we forecasting? This was a stress test. And crypto has given us the ability to set us free. What you just said about entrepreneurship and investment and uh, ex exploration are some of the passengers that I was uh, privy to meeting um, going to Anarchapoco was a retired truck driver. He was able to retire an 18 wheeler wildly while this was happening in all the, in the, the convoys, he was able to retire because of crypto and he was able to pay for his flight on a private charter, which he never would have done on his own with his money making uh, as a blue collar worker using regular fiat slave currency. He was able to fly to an event of, of like-minded individuals, of freedom forward thinking people using crypto on a freedom flight. So when I tell you it's a, slow, a closed circuit that we're creating, what I would implore everyone to start exploring, as I mentioned to you, is education. So if you're coming in because it's all in everyone's tongue right now, thanks to all, all of the talk going around about crypto. Okay, so if you're looking at it, really get educated. Come to things like that, you're, that you provide the education, the, the podcasts, the, the blogs, follow along on Twitter, read the articles, get yourself educated. Second to that is start using it. Don't sit on it because what we are doing with Freedom Travel is allowing people to take the wealth that they've acquired, but also use it not just sit on it, flip it back to the slave currency to buy things. I would like to be a, fee, uh, a closed circuit of crypto versus I would like to take your crypto and use that for buying fuel, use the crypto for buying my planes, use the crypto for buying the hotels, use the crypto for creating vacation packages, not flipping it over because that is the next phase. That's where we need to head. And we need to head there very quickly. We were on our way there. So um, I, I'm a big blocker. I was on the on the side of the Bitcoin civil war where, you know, uh, my business partners, by the way, were on the other side, which is great. Um, but we I was on the side of the Bitcoin civil war where we wanted to use Bitcoin as cash. And we saw the number one application of the Bitcoin protocol in its original design to be that of nano transactions, of micro transactions for then us to be able to build on the blockchain. Literally, I see it from my big blocker perspective as the PSYOP that set us back a good five to seven years on purpose because they did not want Bitcoin to thrive. But guess what, guys? That actually opened up the opportunity for you who is watching this right now to be on the cutting edge and to be a pioneer because this bought you time. This bought you time so that you can get into crypto early. A lot of people think that crypto is still, oh, no, look, man, the, my, the main narrative in crypto is that do nothing narrative that she just spoke about. And you see that a lot in BTC. It comes from the BTC. I call it the PSYOP of BTC that gave people sponsored by MasterCard, Bilderberg, A AXA, um, all of, you know, Silicon oh. Valley big tech, and they sponsored a, the creation of a do-nothing coin, of a sit-on-your-ass, do-nothing-with-this-technology, and they crippled it, giving you only seven transactions per second, that now we're seeing that that same technology that we fought for, you can call BSV a testbed if you want, is doing over 100,000 transactions per second right now where the vast majority of the crypto transactions in the entire space, over half of them, are happening on BSV, on the original Bitcoin design at scale, okay? Guess what, guys, that you're listening to this? A lot of you guys are privacy maximalists. A lot of people were sold on the idea that Bitcoin was private by default or that it was private enough for use. And given situations like the ones we've been talking about during this conversation about having to use crypto when you need it most well guess what we re some of us realized that bitcoin was never going to be the privacy coin that they're still selling to you that btc is so these people that were honest created protocols like monero and pirate chain 
for you to be able to actually have autonomy in the way that you use your cryptocurrency. So we are at the beginning stages of something very new, something that was it's, it's in a sense, like, like they said, Bitcoin is like a hydra. Crypto is a hydra. They try to cut a head off and dupe us or whatever, like they did with BTC. But guess what? 10 other heads are going to grow stronger. And that's what's happening right now. That real cryptocurrency is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. And we have Monero, Wownero, Dero, and Pirate Chain leading the charge in the real cryptocurrency space. And if you look at the market cap of these coins, you will see that we are, you You are just, this is a blessing to you watching this. You're right that there. these networks are just babies still that are solid, built on the shoulders of giants on the experiences that we've have had with Bitcoin and with all of the early protocols. And now these are being built from the ground up correctly so it's it's this is, a, this is a great time for everybody to to get involved in crypto because this is not just a space to do nothing with like they try to sell you this is a space for you to actually have utility in ways you've never experienced before um i'm really excited about dero d-e-r-o have you heard of dero i haven't but now i'm gonna go look at it up Okay, so Dero is the privacy. It's it's a can, it's what it's what Ethereum always promised to be, but they never had privacy by default. If it comes Dero, off of this guy's lips, you guys know that by tomorrow we'll be accepting it. Cool. So yeah, Dero is 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 uh, they just launched their mainnet like a couple uh, like a week or so ago, no more than three weeks ago. Um, they're the privacy smart contract platform that we champion. That we we've, we've scoured the space and these guys got it um they yeah so we're really for the first time in crypto are going to be able to experience true decentralized autonomous organizations not what they sold you in 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 ethereum because they those DAOs can't be autonomous because they're not resistant to censorship and we're going to be able to experience real DeFi because all this DeFi bs that we've heard throughout the past two three four years has been nothing more than CeFi disguised as DeFi on transparent blockchains that are open to financial voyeurism and surveillance. So they literally gave people a honeypot to play within. And now we know that Ethereum is in bed with the world demonic forum. And we saw this shit coming a long time ago, just on the, the from a fundamental time. perspective. We knew that this shit was nothing to play with. People kept asking us, why don't you play with Ethereum? What about Ethereum? Yeah, there's a lot of great people in Ethereum building great products on Ethereum. The problem with them is that they're building in the, on the wrong foundation. If they want to build something that is transparent and open to surveillance, in other words, open to the dispute resolution of government law, do it right. Do it correctly. And don't lie to people and tell them that you're building on something that is solid for their desires of escaping tyranny when it is not. And so now we have, uh, finally, we have Darrow, Pirate Chain, and Monero leading the charge in the privacy coin, in, in the real cryptocurrency space. And you guys listening to this, I'm telling you, we're at the beginning of this. Crypto's just getting started. And so don't, Think of crypto as just a space. I just went on this rant based on what you said, Susan, of just holding these coins and doing nothing with them. If you're not creating with them, if you're not actually using these protocols in your life, then preach, preach. Then you're not doing hell. anything. You have to really take them onto yourself to find a, a deficit and an excess in the economy around you and arbitrage with crypto. Because crypto allows you to do things that you can't do in any other way. So become that market maker in the spaces of the economy that you know best. Because this is it, guys. If you don't step up and become a crypto entrepreneur, you're going to miss out on a great opportunity. Someone else is going to figure it out before you do. 
and you're not contributing to the space in the way that you could. So get off the bench, get, you know, let go of those lies of huddle. Huddle is just, it's just, it's just, is a stupid mentality that the people, the person, my one of my best buddies, Daniel Krawitz, the emperor of Bitcoin himself, wrote an article in the Satoshi Nakamoto Institute titled, I, you, uh, I'm hoarding my Bitcoins and no, you can't have any. They used his arguments in a half-assed way. And this was Silicon Valley and big tech. They used my friend's arguments in a half-assed way to attack Bitcoin. And when you ask Daniel Krawitz what hyper-Bitcoinization is about, because he is the one that dubbed the term hyper-Bitcoinization, he literally was talking about creating an on-chain economy that is exclusive, separate from the legacy slave system. And all, a lot of idiots fell for the trap of only listening to what he wrote and reading half ass what he wrote. And they just followed the narrative of these lizards that came in to rob you of the opportunity to really change the world with crypto. Because the, if you only think of HODL and you're only thinking of what my price is at the market at the certain time, I, you know, in coin market cap or coin gecko, you're still being the bitch of the establishment. Because you're still depending on how the legacy financial slave system views crypto. No, 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 no. Crypto is for us to say, fuck you to the legacy financial system of lizards so that we can create our own economy. This is P to P currency. It's not P to lizard to P currency. So if you're still caught up on what the price of the coin is, and you're constantly checking coin gecko you're fucking up because yeah of course that's exciting to see but there's more to this guys you have to realize that these technologies are world changing and they're only world changing if you actually use them it is in their utility that we find their value if you don't have utility you don't have shit so they lied to you gave you a crippled version of bitcoin and btc and to me, Bitcoin is the protocol in its original form from Satoshi, not the stupid ticker symbol that comes from the exchanges owned by the lizards, okay? It comes from the actual use case of these technologies. So fucking use them. All right, I'm done talking. I'm done. Mic drop. I can't follow that, guys. There's no way anyone could follow uh, that. I just, you know, because you inspire me, Susan, and your mom, you're fucking coming at this. You're seeing a need in the market and you're using crypto how it's supposed to be used and i see so many people wasting their time sure technical analysis is great at the crypto vigilante we have the most badass technical analysts on the planet the first guys that charted bitcoin in the bitcoin talk forums in 2010 yes we have the most badass dudes if you want technical analysis listen to our guys I listen to them every day. They're fucking amazing. But Bitcoin is more than that. Crypto is more than that. And, and so you have to use these technologies. How? You have to figure it out. I can't hold your hand on everything. You have to figure it out. You have to be the market maker. You have to see the excesses and deficits around you like Susan saw. She saw excesses of what? Of people fucking wanting to be free. Stop. They're stuck at home with these tyrants telling them what to do, putting their livelihood at stake. And she saw a deficit, a need in the market, and she bridged that. And now she has this amazing endeavor going on that we're going to support and we're going to keep inviting you here to talk to us, to give us updates on what's happening with the freedom of movement yeah. in the world. Because, yeah, it, it, you know, and I agree. With, you know what, Susan? I agree with you. Yes, things could get worse, but it honestly comes down to us if we let it get worse. That's right. Fool me once, right? Shame on you. I won't say the second phrase because I, I'm not going to be fooled twice. I'm right here saying, no, I drew my line. And I'm building it, my planes as we go. And I have an ARC 2.0. So sit and screw. 
Checkmate, motherfuckers. 100%. You guys that were fooled <laughs> by the BTC rhetoric of just huddle and do nothing, sit on your ass, take emphasis away from the network and give it back to the lizards. You were fooled. Okay. Yes, the lizards will keep giving fiat to what it is that they want to distract you with and give you a false sense of security and success. And they'll give you rhetoric to for you and, and libertarian rhetoric, of course, because they have to sound like us to make you think that you're doing something revolutionary by sitting on your ass and doing nothing. Nothing. Right. But here you are, the most hated fucking network on the planet. BSV is proving to you guys that Satoshi's original design fucking works that you can build an on-chain economy but 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 of course there has to be compliant with law because bitcoin was always from the get-go a transparent global ledger of honesty of truth but guess what guys they sold you on bitcoin and bitcoin cash and even ethereum telling you that those were privacy coins that they gave Let's you censorship resistance that they gave you decentralization look man even if they gave you decentralization you're still in a stupid a glass house where they're going to screw you over. So the main thing guys is to get with it. Real cryptocurrencies here in the form of what we call it privacy coins right now, but they're nothing more than real cryptocurrency, real censorship resistant cryptocurrency and get with it. Start building, find the need, feel that need. And if you can carry more, carry more, because unfortunately, there's a lot of idiots out there that are still depending on other people to do the work for them. And so if you're an entrepreneur and you're like, dude, I already built X and Y companies and I already exited this amount and I already did that and the other, I hate to break it to you, brother, but you're going to have to get back to it because you're going to have to make, if you want freedom in the world, you're going to have to make up for all the idiots that are not doing anything. Like you're going to have to build more. So if you can carry more, carry more. Susan, you still there? I think she's still there. Okay. She's back. Okay. I'm so sorry. We had like a no, giant good. thunderclap and I just jumped to the window. I'm like, oh my God. Um, look, I think that what you're saying is everything that we already knew. Uh, and for those that don't, this is the second wave. You're getting in and when they're getting in is good. So jump in, the water's warm, start using it, start doing something. Don't sit on the sidelines because now is the time for a maker's mark. So come in, make, create, uh, and let's build these, these new ways together using crypto. Yeah. I mean, nothing's and, and, better than that. And we don't even have to, we don't have to fire one shot guys. It's all about creating an alternative system. It really is creating something of value and by creating something of values what really what will protect you in life it really is a lot of people are so privacy conscious because of oh, i'm so i'm so scared the world's falling apart i just want to hide and they think of privacy coins or just cryptocurrency in general as a place to just hide but you have to understand that capitalism and what satoshi gave us is an offensive weapon a weapon of value there's nothing more beautiful than being being able to use to offer value to others. And that in itself betters your life, the life of others. And it is an offensive weapon against these lizards and what they have in store for us. So it's really important guys to get with it. We can keep ranting all night long. We Susan. could. And I would just say that the best part is, is that there's more and more of the companies that are, were creating this. There's more and more advisors like yourself that are willing to give this type of strong sermon um, to those that are unsure. And is it the time to use my coin or is it not? Um, I am looking forward to two months from now where I can say, hey, there's other people that are doing it. Maybe I find a fuel farm that's taking it. Maybe I find the uh, refurbish guy that's willing to take it, the catamaran that's willing to take it. Everyone that we interact with as a company, we ask them, do you take crypto? If not, would you be open to learning more on why you should? Every conversation, I risk the relationship because the more you know, the better you're going to be. And I think that if they're working with us, then they're like-minded already. So it could be a simple conversation right there. I've asked even my coffee shop that they 
are, you know, they play in crypto is what they told me. Oh, you guys take crypto? You know, we invest and they love to have that conversation of what they're doing inside of crypto and what do you take and what do they have and what they store and what they're little. And then I said, great. So are you going to start taking it for my cup of coffee? Oh, no, I don't. I mean, that's just not really worth it. And we have to have more brave businesses to make it worth it. So it no longer becomes this hard to get over hurdle of converting. Let's not even convert. Let's get to the point where the guy that sells the beans, the guy that's harvesting, the guys that's getting paid for the harvesting, um, the guy that makes the cups, the woman that, you know, makes the milk, the farmer that has the eggs, we all need to be taking it and accepting it and using it. 100%. You guys want to know the number one secret in crypto? I'm going to give it to you guys for free right now. Just fucking take it. But you better fucking use it because if I'm giving you something valuable, you better use it. Look, guys, if you really want to fucking make money in crypto, like, and I'm not just talking about money, like I bought something and maybe it goes up, which well, in crypto, yeah, it would all, it's all going to go up. But it's, 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 uh, if you really want to create value, this is a secret, guys. Go to meetup.com and look for the cryptocurrency meetup, the Bitcoin meetups in your area. Join them, go to them. And if there isn't one, guess what? You create one. You create one and it's very easy. You just go to a coffee shop or a bar in your area and say, hey, can I have a meetup in here once a week, twice a week, or, or twice a month or whatever, whatever you want. And more likely they'll say, yeah. And that's it, guys. That's all you have to do. If you're not even an extrovert, you don't have to be an extrovert. Just go put a Bitcoin sign. And sit down, get a beer, and people will just come. And you just sit down and relax and just talk to people. That is the easiest thing to do, and yet it is the most profitable thing you can do in crypto. Why is that? Because you're going to get to know a lot of people in your area, especially now. Now that people are looking for answers, and they're looking for, like, what the fuck to do next? Because the lizards are, are, are drowning them, are choking their livelihood away. So this is the opportunity for you to be a market maker in your local area. Very yeah. simple, guys. Just go to the dive bar down the street and say, can I have a meetup here once a month? And guess what? They'll more likely say yes because they want people coming in. <laughs> Set it up. Just You don't have to do anything. You don't have to give a speech. Nothing. Just sit there, Bitcoin, and just let people come. Just relax. Let people come and mingle. And I will assure you, you're going to meet so many awesome individuals and you're going to be surprised. You're going to be surprised by the amount of people in your area that are interested in cryptocurrency. You're going to be shocked and you're going to probably meet some incredible individuals from all I will walks tell of life. Everybody, I will tell everybody right there is that when we started taking crypto, I want to be very clear of all, and I don't have the books in front of me, but I have books, I have podcasts. I didn't know what I didn't know. And so I'm surrounding myself with the experts. So don't be afraid of getting into business using crypto either. So if you've been sitting on the side of like hoarding and mining, don't be afraid of using it saying, well, I don't know how to do it. I don't know. How. I didn't either. And if I, if a blonde mom, soccer mom from Jersey can figure it out, come on now, you guys can figure it out faster. Uh, because the more we get into and past the point of, well, I don't know how to, I don't know where to, I don't know who does, I don't know what's the best platform. You got to try it all out. Know that you are helping pioneer this alongside of people like myself, because no one has it figured out. There's no recipe like one plus one equals this is how you do it. It's, hey, you can try this one. Everyone has their opinion on which platform to go with and why. Um, so don't wait for it to be perfect. Uh, just be a messy artist on this one and get going. There you go. Guys, we're going to have Susan back maybe every month, every other month, because we need to talk about this um, as often as possible. Be in the loop of what's happening with our travel. Like just tonight, you're listening to like, you, you're just on it, right? With you were listening to the Senate, right? You told us. Yeah. Yeah. So the Senate, like I said, they voted 60, 60 over. Um, they were waiting for everyone to turn around of the rhinos, but we are surprised Mitt Romney didn't, um, you know, he, he caved 
but we had three Democrats turn around and say, we're done with the mask mandates because we're in the, we're in the time frame of um, them coming up for reelection. But what in Canada, they change the laws every 14 days. So we are constantly looking at the laws. Switzerland, everyone thinks that they've, they've actually removed all the, the requirements. But if you know, if you're a UK citizen, the, that doesn't apply. So again, we are in there like little termites. We pick it apart, we read it, we understand it. So this way our members are getting the best of and most relevant information for them to be moving and then to be traveling with. Uh, and so what I say to everybody is join us, become a member. Um, get into the back end. Um, if anything, just even check out our freedom travel guide. We have that where I uh, did a uh, call out to all of our subscribers to not shop on Amazon this year uh, for Christmas and use our freedom travel guide to buy all of their gifts because we have products, services, providers inside of that, a new Yelp version um, of freedom loving natural you know, humans that are looking to, again, close that circuit. And I encouraged all of them to start taking crypto as well, because it starts in our own backyard. If I take it, you should take it. Um, so I, I really hope that you guys would consider following, liking, joining, and becoming part of the solution that we know we know we need in the world. Awesome. Susan, thank you for your time. And thank Thanks you guys for tuning in. Um, yeah, I, this was great. Thank you so much for being with us. And guys, just have to say goodbye. Peace, love, anarchy. Till next time. Cheers. A recent bloodbath has shaken the cryptocurrency market to its core. When the stablecoin Luna collapsed, the entire industry felt the ripples. And longtime and new investors alike started hammering down on the panic button. But not clients of the crypto vigilante. Two months before the apocalyptic event, famed crypto asset analyst Mr. Z predicted this exact scenario and told their vigilantes exactly what to do about it. Mr. Z explained that if confidence in the asset was ever tested, it would trigger a death spiral loop that would cause Luna to implode. He also warned their vigilante readers not to use UST as a reliable store of value and what to do instead. Discover their predictions and how the crypto vigilante keeps their readers safe while making them wealthier every step of the way. Because these shockwaves haven't finished yet, but the real cryptocurrency bull market is right around the corner and you want to be ready. Read more at CryptoVigilante.io.